if you're a singer, you're kind of like a woodwind instrument or a violin. If you have a beat and it's going doom, da, doom, da, doom, da, and you're a singer, you go da 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 da. But if you're a rapper, you're a percussion instrument within the percussion. So now the beat's going doom, da. I gotta go da 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 with the words da. And the people that can do it the best, they're considered to have the better flow in rap. It can be done very basic, like Big Daddy Kane said in the movie, if you can rhyme cat with hat, you can be considered a rapper. But the better ones, it's complex, and somehow it just arrives on the beat, and you're just like, wow, that's entertaining. It's an art. <laughs> Stop scheming and trying to look hard. I get my bodyguard. You get that booty start. I'm a veteran, which means that I've been in the game too long since... And another interesting bit of history I thought that emerged from this documentary was that, that hip-hop emerged at a time when the, the New York state school system was being cut back and, um, and you know, no musical instruments anymore in schools. So uh, these black kids growing up in the, in, in the housing projects took record players and turned them into instruments and then added their voices. I mean, explain that process for us. Well, they say necessity is the mother of invention. And, you know, kids are sitting around. They don't have instruments. They don't know how to play. They just sit. And what happened was they found out that by using a, a mixer that mixes two records together, DJ Mixer, that the DJs found out that they can mix the breakdowns of the records. There's no vocals on it. You know, it's where the record it's getting good. And it goes, get that. Everybody likes that part. So the DJs in New York said, well, since that's the best part of the record, why play the rest of the record? We'll just play the break. Now, the DJ that possessed the best breaks was the hottest DJ in the neighborhood. Now, the kids would, by, by mixing this break back and forth, they would create an instrumental track. Now, the kids that would dance off of this music were called break dancers because they danced off the breaks of the music. Now I'm the DJ doing this incredible thing, so I hand the mic to somebody and I say, tell everybody how great I am. Now we have an instrumental. So the MC or the rapper starts to talk about the DJ. That's why early rap groups were named Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, Jazzy Jeff and Fresh Prince. They start with the DJ's name. Then the, the, the rapper said, well, the DJ's kind of good, but I'm kind of good, too. And he starts to steal the show and start to talk about himself in rhyme because it's a beat, a break. Now what happens is the next rapper steps up, says, well, he was good, but I'm better. And by the way, I was with his sister. And then that's where the competition starts to come in. Hip hop, the culture, is a very much like a sport. It's competition. You know, the graffiti artist is better than the other graffiti artist, the dancer. And it's the way inner city youth found pride in themselves, that I'm a better rapper. I'm not a better fighter or a killer. I'm a better rapper. I'm a better dancer. And it was a peaceful way to gain pride in a neighborhood that was pretty much based, like I always say, if a kid can't get known by being positive, he'll get known by being negative. That's just how we are. We want to be known. So the rappers became now the new heroes in the neighborhood, and kids say, hey, I want to be a breaker. I want to be a graffiti artist. I want to be a DJ. It gave them a lot of outlets. Hip-hop. Ice-T, his new film, Something for Nothing, The Art of Rap, is on general release, Certificate 15. And this evening, Ice-T will be uh, performing at the Hammersmith Apollo uh, in London with fellow rappers, and that's going to be simulcast live to 70 cinemas across the UK at 